Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Hope you're all doing okay today. It's Wednesday, another rainy day in New York City. Great Chicago song. No, I don't live in New York City. I live upstate, but uh, it just seems like we get one good day yesterday. Nice spring, warm weather. Pulled the shorts out and everything today. Turn the heat back on. Mid upper 40s, rainy, uh, and we're supposed to get like three or four days in a row of rain. I'm telling you, <sighs> lockdown, spring won't come. Hopefully, someday, right? Hopefully, someday. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to take a look at the studio discography of a band that I like a lot. Um, they're a newer breed of progressive rock band. Newer, meaning been around since the early 90s. I think they officially formed in 89. First album came out in, what, 91. So a more modern band, but a veteran band. They've got uh, they've got about 10, 10 album releases, okay, over the course of the last 30 years. God, 30 years. Woo. Talking about Echolin from Pennsylvania. Uh, if you're someone who's come upon this show and you're like, I have never heard of Echolin, well, shame on you. You should. If you're a, if you're an old school prog rock fan, all right, you like all the greats of the '70s and the early '80s, then you should be listening to Echolin. A lot of really good albums here, uh, greatly influenced by Gentle Giant and Yes and Genesis, all the usual suspects. I'm also hearing, I also hear some Marillion, early Fish era Marillion, some of their stuff as well. Uh, Great bunch of guys. I've had the opportunity to meet them. I've seen them live. Uh, really, really good dudes. Good band. Very honest music. Signed to a major label record. Label, signed to Sony. I'll just get that out. In the uh, early 90s, released one of their albums, As the World, on Sony Music. Uh, but, of course, you know how it goes, right? Especially in the 90s. Uh, Label not really too keen on the direction the band were going in. They were a progressive rock band after all. Wanted the band to put together and do more straightforward, you know, commercial type material, which uh, they were not agreeing to. And then they broke up for about five years before getting back together and kind of restarting everything again. Bye bye Sony though. So anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna include all of their studio releases here. Uh, I'm gonna record EPs as well as uh, kind of like a compilation of sorts that was released uh, after they had split up. So I'm gonna include. I want to give them some love. So I'm gonna include all the stuff. Uh, they, they've got some live things. I'm not gonna include those because um, I'm not even sure if I have any of their live albums. I don't think I do, but I've got all their studio stuff. So. <clears throat> Coming in at the bottom, and again, let me preface this by saying I like the, all these releases a lot. So just because some may be a little further down the list doesn't mean they're not really good. These are all worth uh, seeking out. I'll kind of give you the reasons why some might be a little more towards the bottom of the list or not. Uh, and Every Blossom from 1993. I know some of you are probably looking at that CD cover and thinking, that looks like something my son or daughter or my little kid might have done. Well, they kind of went for that here. Uh, this is a quick little, you know, four song EP. It's mostly acoustic. It's it's charming, kind of neat. You know, you have all the echel and quirks are here, but it's more of like a quiet affair. Uh, you got Bright Sides, Ballet for a Marsh, Brunch in the Sun, and Blue and Sand. Like I said, charming listen. It's like maybe 15 minutes long. It's mostly acoustic guitars and some keys and drums or percussion and what have you. Very uh, very cool vocals and lyrics and things like that. It, it's your typical Echol and Fair, but just done, like I said, more acoustically. Just kind of more of a laid-back affair. I dig it. <clears throat> it's not what I reach for that often when it comes to Echol and, but... It, you know, it's got it's it's got its own certain charm in the catalog, uh, and that was released in 1993. Next up, I'm going to go 1996's "When the Sweet Turns Sour." So this was put out, like I said, after the band had split up, following the debacle with Sony. This is a collection of like leftover tracks that didn't make their previous albums, some live stuff, some covers. So you've got uh, what do we got in here? You have. Uh, where the Sour Turns to Sweet, which is actually a cover of an old, old Genesis song from Genesis' very, very first album, which was meant to be on a Magna Carta Genesis covers album with a bunch of other young and up-and-coming progressive rock bands. But Sony was like, eh, you can't do that. So they included it here. 
Uh, what else we got? Meaning in the Moment is a very fine tune. You got some live stuff and different takes on things like uh, A Little Nonsense, As the World. You got 100 Diversions, uh, you know, all sorts of kind of little oddities and what have you. A good, you know, it's a fun curiosity album. You know, some of the tracks that were left off of specific albums. You know, not as good as the stuff that made it to the albums, but some of the live and alternative takes are cool. And it's it's a fun kind of curiosity album of little odds and ends from the band, uh, which at the time we thought we would never see again. Not so much, right? So next album, we're going to go to 2000. This is the Reunion album. Okay. And I probably should talk about the band, right? So before I get going. So uh, on uh, on keyboards and backing vocals, you got Chris Busby. Okay. On vocals and bass, you've got Ray Weston. On guitars and vocals, you've got Brett Cull, uh, as well as uh, you know some former members. I'm not really sure what the current lineup is right now. Uh, Paul Ramsey on drums and percussion. I, I could have sworn Paul was still in the band. Uh, Tom Hyatt also on bass. He was in and out of the lineup. Uh, I'm not sure what his current uh, status is. Uh, Jesse Reyes also played very, very early on on bass, and uh, Jordan Pearlson also was a member of the band briefly. So that's just so you know. But uh, as far as I know, the, the current guys, uh, Weston Cole, Busby, and I think Ramsey, but again, I'm not sure about Ramsey or Hyatt, uh, but they were the most recent members of the band. So anyway, so we're going to go fast forward to 2000. Band gets back together, okay, for Cowboy Poems Free. At the time when this album first came out, I think a lot of the folks who were really into Eklund from early in their career, those first couple of albums, were a little bit disappointed in this album because it's a little bit different from some of their original releases. It's very quirky and upbeat, and it's still very much a prog album, but it's it's a little accessible sounding. Not that it's a bad thing. And I know myself, too, at the time, was kind of like, yeah, this is cool, but man, it's not quite as good as the last couple, right? All these years later now, 20 years later, uh, in re-listening to this album, this is actually a really good album. Uh, Texas Dust is a great song. Human Lottery, Gray Flannel Suits, excellent. Uh, American Vacation Time, pretty cool song. High as Pride. Uh, you got Swing in the Axe. What else? Too Late for Everything is a fantastic, catchy, quirky song. Brittany, uh, I, I think this it's, it's got a really cool bass playing. The guitars are really intricate. There's nothing really heavy on this album, but it's just kind of jangly guitars. Um, you know, some of the some of the uh, vocal passages, again, again, these guys love Gentle Giant, so they went for that whole kind of like a cappella vocal style. Lots of use of counterpoint in the, in the music, musicianship. Um, a fun song, pretty memorable. So this is probably like Echolin at their most catchy and accessible, but it's still really, really good. And again, that was from uh, 2000. Uh, next up there, follow-up release to that in 2002, the album My. Basically a concept album, all one long song, 49 minutes and change, broken up into a ton of different tracks. Uh, I actually saw them play at Nearfest and do this entire album, which was really, really cool. I mean, this this is really good. Again, this is a little more adventurous for the band. And I actually got them to sign my CD, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> a little more adventurous, but still really good. Maybe not as accessible for some people, but I dig it. Got a lot of good... Uh, instrumental passages on here. The guitar work and the keyboard work is really, really good. Again, the vocals layered all over the place. Uh, just a really cool album. Not as immediate. It, it, it took me a while to really get into that one, but it's it's quite, quite good. That was 2002. Uh, next up, we're going to go to 2005 for The End is Beautiful. I think for those who wanted more of the traditional Echolin kind of uh, format as opposed to this, that's what they got here. This is this is really good. You know, you got the uh, the wonderful Georgia Pine. All right, make me sway. Arc of Descent is a fantastic song. Misery not memory. Heavy blue miles. The whole thing is really really good. Catchy stuff, yet very uh, challenging instrumentally speaking. Good return to like kind of earlier form. All right, if that's kind of what you were looking for, uh, easily one to recommend there. Uh, Number five from 2012, we're going to go with uh, their second self-titled release. This one's called Echolin. Uh, this is double disc set, lots of long tunes, a lot of uh, really adventurous songwriting here. 
Okay, the track Island is something to look forward to. Locust to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Could they perhaps have been talking about Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where Nearfest, the Northeast Art Rock Festival, was held every year? Don't know. Past Gravity, The Cardinal and I, When Sunday Spills, all really good stuff. Like I said, double disc set. Uh, definitely, you know, top of their game there. As is this one, which is the most recent one that they've released. Uh, apparently they are working on something new now, hopefully for release later this year or next year. Uh, I hear you're listening from 2015. This is quite good. This is quite good. And you can see here all the guys in the bands um, had autographed this for me. All right. This is their, you know, ninth album. Messengers of All's Right. All right. War Jazz, Empyrean Views, another really strong tune on here. Sound of Bees, Vanishing Sun, all this time we're given. Again, mostly lengthier uh, song lengths on this. So we're looking at almost everything on this album is, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes long. Uh, quite good. Again, like I said, uh, if you're into all the kind of counterpoint and little catchy hooks and melodies, lots of different vocal layers, right? The acrobatic guitar and keyboard work of Busby and Cole. It's uh, very, very good stuff. Uh, easily a top album of theirs. All right, so the uh, top of my list, not surprisingly, is going to be comprised of their first three albums, all right? Going to go at number three, once again, another self-titled one. This is their debut album from 1991. This, to me, is uh, it's a little more naive Echolin, but still very enjoyable Echolin. Uh, in addition to the gentle giantisms, especially on the vocal side, which you hear you know, big time on songs like uh, Shades and The Great Men, I also get a lot of uh, fish, early fish era Marillion, like uh, Script for a Jester Tear and, and you know, the really early part of the catalog on a lot of the melodies on this album, you know, specifically on songs like uh, Meaning in the Moment, which is terrific. Uh, also, uh, Clumps of Dirt is a great, great instrumental. Uh, the Velveteen Rabbit, which closes out the album, that also has a very strong Marillion feel to it. Not so much musically speaking, more like the melodies and the vocal harmonies at times. Uh, but a really, really cool album. Again, it's not quite Echolin fully figuring out exactly what they're going to do, but man, they're on their way here. Uh, even more so on 1992's Suffocating the Bloom. Now, this, for a lot of people, might actually be their favorite. I've heard lots of Echolin fans say that they prefer this one the best. You know, uh, it's a little nonsense now and then right some great songs on here uh sweet for the everything winter through memories from between i mean all sorts of really great tracks on here this is this is echolin really figuring out what they want to do and this is the album that got sony all interested in their business to begin with now i don't know how sony would have thought that based on this album based on the album that they recorded for them that you know all of a sudden now they don't like the direction this band is going in. this is what these guys do Right, this is not a top 40 band, this is a progressive rock band who writes some pretty challenging and adventurous music that's going to appeal to a different audience than you know at the time in mid 90s, you know, Nirvana and Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and all that stuff. It's just, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, but my favorite is the Sony debut, okay, As the World from 1995. This is a fantastic album. Uh, if you I would say if you've never listened to this band, you want to just sample one of them. Uh, this is a great choice for number one. Suffocating the Bloom, definitely number two. This is kind of where, for a lot of people, where they first heard of these guys. All right, so like I said, uh, released in 1995 on Sony. Always the same. The title track, As the World, is incredible. The Cheese Stands Alone. The Wiblet, I mean, you know, never the same. God, up and down this list. And again, th this one is comprised of like uh, shorter songs and longer songs, all kind of, it, it's kind of like separated into three sections of the album. Really, really good. Do we get any pictures of the band anywhere here that I can show you guys? Yeah. Here we go. Hold on. Again, this is circa 1995, but uh, 
you get a little idea you know, what the band looked like back then. Killer stuff. Killer stuff. Uh, like I said, if you are someone who has kept up with the, you know, I can I go back in time. I remember like the uh, early mid '90s when I was kind of really fed up with what was going on with metal because, of course, you know, a lot of the metal bands and the hard rock bands were kind of like swept under the rug for a bit because of uh, grunge and alternative music and trying to change their sound to fit in there. I got kind of fed up with all that and I decided to go full bore into prog rock. So I started listening to bands of old, like, uh, you know, like big time, more than ever, like Yes and Genesis and King Crimson and Emerson, Lake and Palmer and, you know, Rush I was always listening to. But Jethro Tull, I started to get into Queen heavier. I discovered Marillion. And then all of a sudden I discovered these bands like Echolin and Spock's Beard and the Flower Kings and Anglegard and Anecdote and then all these other bands that I had never heard of. Pendragon, right? All these bands that I IQ. You know, bands that, you know, had just kind of either just started up or were kind of like bubbling underneath the surface in the 80s. And for, you know, a good, like, God, seven, eight, nine years, man, that's I was just totally immersed in all this kind of stuff. So if you're someone who didn't discover these type of bands back then in the 90s, definitely go check them out. Echolin, a great band. So As the World, my number one. Suffocating the Bloom, number two. The first, the debut, self-titled Echolin. I Heard You Listening. Another self-titled, Echolin. The End is Beautiful. My. My, oh my. Cowboy Poems Free. When the Sweet Turns Sour. And then End Every Blossom. There you have it. Some prime progressive rock from the U.S. of A. in Pennsylvania. Echolin, go check them out. Give them your support. New album coming out sometime in the not-too-distant future. I know they're working on it, so i uh, got that to look forward to. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up tomorrow, we've got another favorite album of the year. We're going to move on to 1968. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to come tomorrow as far as uh, ranking the albums, but you're either going to get... Saga, Hawkwind, The Flower Kings, or Spock's Beard. But all four of those you're going to get over the next couple days. So that's uh, more stuff to look forward to. And uh, we will see you then, guys. All right, take care. Have a good one. Stay safe and be well. Bye-bye.